Hi everyone and welcome once again to a Javi Memorial Library and Mayborn Science Theater Partnership event. We have with us today Mayborn Science Theater CTC astronomer Warren Hart. Hey Warren, how are you? Hey, good to see you. And for everybody <laughs> that's hooked up with us. <laughs> yeah, well, good. Well, we are ready. You've got a lot on your plate to talk about today, so I'm going to let you get started. Okay, very good. Let's bring up the calendar, if you would, of uh, the September calendar. The first week, we want to take a real quick look at it. And if you want to talk real quick here, Cindy, about uh, the astronomy science theater that you have been working on and setting up and filling with uh, great information? Well, I just real quick want to say, with you guys are looking for where these are, it's on our library page, then you hit research study guides, and it's going to be under astronomy and Mayborn Science Theater, and it looks like this, and this is the page that we get all of our maps from. So, and our calendars and all the other cool stuff that we're going to be showing you today. Very so, good. Ready. Very good. So, let's bring up the September calendar, if you will, please. And there we are. Now, uh, uh, just as a back, uh, back up on here, on Sunday, the, the coming, this coming Sunday, the 27th, if you look, it says at 3 a.m., uh, you can do that during the early morning hours if you want. That planet Saturn is at opposition, which means it is behind us in relation to the sun. So the sun is in front of us, Earth is there, and then behind uh, Earth is uh, Saturn. And so it's an outstanding and the best time of the year to see the planet Saturn. I just wanted to bring that up, uh, even though that's in the previous month there. So let's go over and let's get to Friday and to Saturday. And uh, on here, uh, you see the information on uh, September the 1st on the Friday. Uh, we have, and also I'm putting in, it, I haven't got into everybody's, but uh, the favorite planets for the month. So the favorite planets for um, the month of September are uh, three, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn, which we just mentioned. That means that Mercury and Mars are not good for the month of September to try to find. They are too close to the sun. So that would be the problem. All right, so we're gonna start real quick here on Saturday the 2nd, and we have something that's called the equation of time. And Cindy has there something for us to put up. There we go. Here is this uh, funny looking uh, eight. And if you can remember from uh, school days uh, and all on the, the uh, Earth globe that you had in the room out in the Pacific Ocean, there was this funny looking eight. And what that does here, and it's the same thing real quick, it will tell us if you look at the very at the top part of that box on the left it says sun slow and then uh, there in the middle then it says uh, right ascension slash minutes just think minutes and then the other side to the right is sun fast and that will tell you if you uh, have a sundial the sundial is going to indicate to you if the sun is fast moving through the sky or slow moving through the sky. And if we take a look real quick at uh, the top uh, part of the eight, well, the top left, the blue thing there says July the 1st, and then there's a little arrow 
pointing to the left and we're going counterclockwise. It makes the part of the turn. There is August the 1st. Each of those circles, as you can begin to see them separating and you can see them each one, each one is a day. And follow it down, you'll go through where the two lines cross. But what we're looking at is September the 1st and notice up and down, it's in the middle of the fast slow. And so it's on what is called the meridian. And it means just like it says there in the calendar page that the equation of time is zero minutes fast, zero minutes slow. And that's based on a number of things that are moving. Of course, Earth, the sun, and a little bit of the moon, but we'll just leave it with that right now. Now, our first constellation, we have seven, is a constellation called Pisces Austrinus. And as a, a reminder, and also for those who are not familiar, the name of every constellation, all 88 of them in the sky, is in Latin. So Pisces, P-I-S-C-E-S, -E means fish, or in the case, fishes, plural. And then the Austrinus is Latin, and that means south. So in Latin, it would be, as you would read it there, uh, fishes south. And we would say it the uh, southern fish. So there it is. And a major star that's in Pisces Austrinus uh, that you'll be able to see is called, it's got an odd name, Fomalhaut, F O M A L H A U T. And it is, and Cindy's brought it up there, it's that number 10 on there that. Uh, that it is a, a major star. In fact, it's one of the, what we call the 58 navigation stars. And when I was in the Air Force and we would be out flying over the ocean, I would use a sextant to find different stars so I could determine where we were over the ocean there. And uh, so Fomalhaut was one I know that I used a number of times. And there it is. And if you want to scroll down so people will see that uh, the second page has information explaining what's on the first page with those uh, circled numbers and letters and stuff like that. And if you look way down on the list, you see the last star numbered is number 10, Fomalhaut, what I was talking to you about. And you would have an opportunity going on to uh, the lip guide for astronomy, finding the calendars, call up uh, Pisces Austrinus, and then you can scroll down to, onto the second page and read that information. By the way, all of the constellations and the explanation pages are on in the format of PDF. And so you are capable of clicking on any page you want and then uh, uh, click on it, copy it, get you a blank sheet of paper, get it set up and then paste it. And there you have it. So if you wanted to go outside and see Fomalhaut, uh, the star, which is in the constellation Pisces Austrinus, this will help you and give you some, some information. Notice also that uh, there on Fomalhaut, one of the things we see on it is that it is here, uh, uh, 25.1 light years away. What year is this? 2023. 
Okay, so if we subtract five, 25 years from 2023, we come up, when did the, what you will see formal hot in the night sky tonight is in, left the star in 1998. So that's how you can get this. Okay, so uh, that's good enough that we have for the first partial week of, set, of uh, September. Let's go to back and we're go to the second week. There on Sunday the 3rd, there's nothing uh, that we have uh, mentioning about movement of Jupiter. You'll be able to see it. And it's talking about in what direction does it seem to move in the sky. And then we have our second of the seven constellations for uh, September, and that is Cepheus. And the name for him, Cepheus, means king in Latin. Now, <clears throat> notice also on there, uh, the common name for it is that you will see it's the king of Ethiopia. Well, I inserted a little bit of information there because people say, oh, Ethiopia. Yeah, I know where that is. I was good in geography. That's a country over in Eastern Africa. Well, very good, but that's not the same thing. What they're talking about is the mythology, the Greek and Roman mythology of what's up in the sky. And so I have indicated this is the king of the mythical kingdom of Ethiopia. And that's uh, to help you to understand. And here it is. You notice it's very close to the North Pole. In fact, when I do the planetarium presentation this coming Saturday, I will start with Cepheus because I set it up. So I take all of the constellations we're going to talk about, in this case, seven, and I find which one is the furthest north, that's Cepheus, and then we start going down toward the south. Now I do that so it's easier for you to follow on your own when you find the basic constellation for it, and then you be able to go and see and recognize and name and get in your mind what each of those constellations looks like. So that is Cepheus. And we're going to be followed up with uh, Cepheus. Let's, by the way, let's scroll on uh, the second page of Cepheus. Keep going, third page, excuse me. And I uh, want you to look at star number five. And what is it called? Garnet star. Okay. What is a garnet? Isn't that a gemstone? Okay, it's a gemstone, and what color is it? Red. Red. Look what it says there. <clears throat> it's a garnet star. That's a, a common name for it. And look over at the very far to the right. It is the reddest visible star. There are other red stars, but this one for us is the reddest that we can see in there. And uh, there's also additional information on the last page each time I put on there. So there is Cepheus, and you want to look for number 10, which would be uh, the uh, face, uh, the front end of, uh, uh, of, no, it's in his, I'm trying to think of where it is. I want to say his neck of, uh, for Cepheus the king. Okay, let's yeah. go to Tuesday. Yes, you have a question? I don't, I don't see, you said the neck? Tennis uh, neck. Well, uh, it's actually uh, what we're looking for. We find it's number 10. So I, I'm looking at the back there. Okay, there's his ponytail, one, two, and three. 
There's his hat he's got on, 41211. There's his face. And there's his upper lip, which is a 10. And there's where uh, the garnet star is. And his lower lip, number nine. So, okay, glad you oh, mentioned okay. that. Okay, now I see it. There you go. There you go. I see the fish now. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead. And for Tuesday, we go to the next constellation of Grus. Uh, which means crane, but it's not your one that's working to build a building or dig a hole or anything. It's talking about the bird, the crane. So there we have it. And let's take a look at it on its page. It almost to me, I think I'm looking at an ostrich. That's what I think I'm looking at. But this is called the crane. And uh, so you see the information there. Notice on Grus, down below it, outside of the white area, which is devote, set aside for the constellation Grus in the sky, there is our southern horizon. So that means that we had Pisces Astrinus, which was just up above, and on above that was Cepheus the king. So those three you are able to see uh, at any time when uh, it's good and dark and, and facing that direction. So uh, there we go. And the, there is a third page. And uh, let's go on down. And there you have, again, information explaining all the different things uh, about the the names of the stars how bright are they how far away are they how big are they and other pieces of information and you can also copy that down if you so desire and print it out and you have it for any constellation in the sky so that is for grus the crane now we go back to the calendar, and we're going to have, we're going to be our first uh, understanding, if you will, of the moon. And it says it is at its third quarter location. Now, in the past, I have not been referring to a map a chart that I made up to help us understand what that means. But Cindy has it now. So let's go to the page on I, right here. That's, I just want to show everybody. It'll be under the sun, moon, and eclipses. Spot. There you go. Okay. Now, I have, and they'll slowly scroll it up, Cindy. Stop right there. Go just a little more. Up, up a little bit more. Okay, not too far. That's too far. Go back down. We got a, I got a bar in the way from mine. Oh, keep yeah. going down. Keep going down. Nope, nope. The bring the bring the page down. And I'll get backwards what you want. There you go. Stop right there. Thank you. Okay. okay. Here's the first diagram. And it says on there, the, what I have uh, there at the top, phases of the moon. The next line is as seen from above the Earth's North Pole. And down there on, on Earth, right there at the center of the letter A, that, by the way, you can do it on Google, and that is Santa Claus's home, right there. Okay, now, what does it say? Our moon is at a third quarter location. Follow with me as you would go around on your circle, and you're going to find up at the 12 o'clock position, posi location number seven, there is our third quarter moon. Now, a little quick thing is, when do I, when am I going to see a third quarter moon? Well, it's going to be in the morning. Why did I say that? Go look to your right and down. Over there at the number five position, the full moon. 
the full moon is predominantly at our midnight or depending upon what time of the year, standard time, uh, what, or uh, the other time that we have our skip ahead time is maybe at one o'clock. So everything from then on, notice the arrow is going, showing the moon moves around the earth counterclockwise. So that means as you move away from the full moon, everything on there is from midnight and a minute after midnight, two after midnight, three, you go on up to six, that would be three hours from midnight. You go up to seven, and that would be six hours from midnight. And so this is when you see it in the sky in the morning when you're going out to go to work or going out to pick up the newspaper for whatever reason, and you see it, you know that's a third quarter moon. And the two, the other thing is that it is decreasing in the uh, illuminated side of it, the bright side from the sun. So it is a an old English term. It is waning. The sunlight on the moon is decreasing in size or it is uh, losing strength is one way they put it. So there is our third quarter moon, and that's the first one we're going to reference here in the month of September. So, Cindy, let's press on then on that page, and we have on Wednesday, we have Lacerda the Lizard. Here is Lacerda the Lizard, and he is far enough north that you see at the upper right of just above it and to the right of uh, the where the arrow is for north pointing toward the north pole there is cepheus so there was our first constellation that we will talk about in going down through the sky from north to south and we have lacerta here and so you can see that and it's going to be almost, not quite, it's about uh, a few degrees from directly overhead. And that gives you right there, you see Lacerda. It's very, uh, doesn't have a whole lot with it. So this lizard has got a tail. And there up on the top of it, uh, Five, four, five, and eight, that would be its head. And then the other part is its body and then the long tail. I was telling Cindy the other day on my PowerPoint when I would call up the, the Lacerda the Lizard, I have a PowerPoint showing Geico, uh, or Gecko, Geico, the uh, lizard that advertises the uh, insurance company. And then I say, oops, wrong lizard. And then I bring this up. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So uh, we have Lacerta as our fourth constellation. They're moving pretty fast because in this week alone, we get four of them. We got Cepheus the king. We got Gross the crane. We have Lacerta the lizard and our Last one on this week is Aquarius. Do you ever hear the song, The Age of Aquarius? Yep. Well, don't hold your breath and you can't live that long because for Aquarius to be the main constellation in the sky is numerous uh, centuries from now. So that was just a a song. Anyway, here's Aquarius, the water handler, the water bearer, the water pourer outer. And there he is running along with his arm or both arms there. And there's the bag that holds the water. And all of those, those two lines that come down from it out of the front, that's what he is pouring out in the sky. 
and what he's pouring, we say water, but in metho mythologically, he's pouring out stars. So here we have here Aquarius, and now that means we have the first five of the constellations that um, we're going to have. Notice also through right through the head from the back of the neck to the eye and whatever in the front, there is the equator. And if you when you find Aquarius, that gives you a relationship of where the equator is in the sky. Or if you are able to determine the where the equator would be, then that will help you to be able to find Aquarius on there. And since Aquarius is our first constellation here that I would call two things. Notice a blue line diagonal from the upper left to the lower right. And it's called the ecliptic. That's the path of the sun, the moon, and the, con the planets there. So I would call Aquarius an ecliptical constellation, its area in the sky devoted to it. But I have another thing that I would add to that, and there's that brown line, the equator. So Aquarius is one of the rare ones. There's a few, but one of the rare ones that is both ecliptical and equatorial constellation because we, the first others that we saw, none of them were along the ecliptic or close to the equator. Okay, so uh, there's Aquarius. Now we go and back to the calendar for that second week. Notice there in red, seven months until our total solar eclipse. And I put it on the eighth day of each month because it will be on April the 8th of next year. Now let's scroll down to the third week, Cindy, and let's see what we can find. And what we have here is the moon at an apogee. Now, for those who have been with us for some time, you know, I've mentioned that the moon, as it circles the Earth, it is a complete circle but it's not a perfect circle with one single radius. It is like a, an, it's elliptical, like a shape of an egg. So there is a time in each time it orbits the moon, and we count the time of uh, when each, that the orbit starts is on its new moon point, but we haven't got to that yet is that we goes there and go on that one orbit time period in September, there's a point here we call the apogee, which means that the circle portion of the moon's orbit is its farthest from Earth. And there's what it says. It is the fourth farthest of the 13 apogeal moons. And there you use the information. Notice here is also on Tuesday the 12th is our sixth next to last constellation called Pegasus, the winged horse. So Cindy has that and here we come up and there we are. And there is Pegasus and that big square, almost perfect square, not quite, of uh, stars 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm going to say that's his, um, maybe the tail in the form. He's got enough fur or hair, horse hair or whatever, that he can use it as a sail. And so that's what we have uh, like there. And then Pegasus see, have wings? Well, it could be, it that said winged. winged horse, that could be one of the wings that's up, or we're looking at a flat picture of Pegasus, 
there might be considered in some mythical uh, literature that it may have two of those uh, wings that we have. And uh, there's the rest of Pegasus. Also, what's significant about it, notice right above it, uh, the word Lacerda, and above that is the North Arrow. So, as we saw, the Lacerda gets down close to uh, further south, but it's not the, uh, down to the equator, but it's just above what we call our latitude for CTC, where we are. And that means all along that line is directly overhead. So to really, to see Pegasus, you need to get you in a, in a lawn uh, chair or whatever it is that allows you to lay back because if you're going to stand out there on your own two feet and look up to almost direct overhead, you may get acquainted with the earth real quick. So uh, just be aware of where it is. And notice it's way north of the ecliptic and the equator. So it is not called either one of those things. So there we have, if you will, uh, our, six, our sixth of the constellations of the seven for September. Let's go back to the calendar. And on the calendar, we're going to go over to Thursday the 14th. And we also uh, mentioned to you planet Mercury. That's not going to do any good because we can't see Mercury in the month of September. But I put it on there anyway. And then we have our next location of the phase of the uh, moon. And it says it's at the new location. So Cindy's going to bring our phase moon sequence up again. And there we are. Notice and remember. Where were we the time previous? We were at point seven, the third quarter. As the moon continued on, that it moved through point eight and it finally got to point one. And here we have the sun is ahead of us as we are looking out uh, there. And the moon is right in between us. Which part of the moon are we going to see when it's a new moon? Back in the dark side, so we're the not going to see anything. Side. So right. we don't. We don't. You actually can't see a, the 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 precise new moon point. Now, just a few hours later. Uh, then you'll begin to see a very small sliver of uh, light coming onto the moon, and that's as it goes. And so here is where number one position is where the moon will be on the afternoon of April the 8th, 2024. Okay. And I uh, add for you just a little bit of information in between points one and two on the outside of it. Each day, the moon rises approximately 40 min 49 minutes later in the sky. So there's just some basic information on there. Scroll on this page, Cindy, all the way, bring the bottom of it. There's another viewpoint, and you see I say this is as seen from the Earth. So this is when you go out in the yard or wherever you are, and you look for that point as you look and go along there from uh, new being one is a dark, the dark moon there, that you go over to number seven, that's a third quarter, that's what you see. The light and dark is in perfectly in line, so it is the moon looks like it's cut in half, what we want to say there, but it's actually one fourth 
of uh, the entire moon. And as time went on, three hours later, if you will, or earlier, here was it would be the uh, gibbous moon of uh, the, the there, and gibbous means bulge or hump, H-U-M-P. And eventually, uh, what we were we would be doing, I uh, want to uh, bring us in the direct time. Was at seven. Was at six a.m. We want to go to the right to eight at nine a.m. And there's number one. And we can go back up to the other pay, part of the page. And we see as time progresses, what I have for you is uh, from 6 a.m. to around over to 9 a.m. Uh, on there. So, okay. Now, let's go down. Uh, that's our new location. Let's go to our third uh, week of, the of September. And the sun, I just mentioned to you the sun, where it is going into uh, the new constellation, or the next constellation of Virgo. Not a whole lot happening on this week. We get over, and I just put some more information. On the 21st, we are 200 days from the total solar eclipse. Now, let's continue on to the 22nd. And we have the moon at its first quarter position and beginning its waxing gibbous phase. So let's help us. Let's go back to the moon picture again. Thank you. And there's the new moon position one. And as the time progresses on, then eventually it's going to be at position two and then to position three, which is the first quarter of the uh, next phase, next orbital phase. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the page and I'll show them right there. Good. We went from, remember the third quarter was position seven, in between the third quarter and the new moon of one, is 0 0.8 and then we go over to the left side and 0 0.8 uh, or one there is uh, our new moon and we go on and then at three in the afternoon we begin to see the moon being illuminated by the sun and we have a crescent uh, here, not the gibbous, that's from midnight on. This is prior to midnight that we have. And an interesting thing, you look at that crescent part of the, of the moon, and what you can decide to do, take that looks like, and I'm just going to say, it looks like the bow of a regular bow and arrow uh, piece that you would have. And if you take the top and the bottom where you would string, have the string for the bow and in the center of where you're wanting to put the arrow to shoot to the right, as you do that, uh, when it's on a crescent, you can mentally in your mind use that uh, where that arrow would be and in what direction it is pointing, it is going to point to the sun. So where it is, if it's below the horizon by then, point and it goes down below the horizon, but it shows you where it went down and other things on that. So let's go back, if we will, on uh, the page. And we have at its first quarter location, it waxing gibbous uh, on that. And now we go to Saturday the 23rd. The sun is at a place called the fall 
equinox. Now that's Latin, equinox. And if I say that equinox, what English word comes to mind as part of that? Pardon? Equal? Equal. Very good. Now, it's not as obvious, but the equinox, the latter part, nox, is talking about night or darkness. So, on the equinox, that is when we have 12 hours daylight, 12 hours darkness, because the sun is traveling, uh, coming and going across the summer. And when we take the path of the ecliptic and the equator and they cross on here, then we have a change of seasons. So in September, summer will end and autumn will begin. And that's what that's for. All right, last week, last week, we have our final constellation, and that is Tucana. Uh, there, the bird, the toucan, and we're going to see it. So, Cindy, let's bring it. Okay, go ahead, and you can see here. Here is another line that we had not seen before. And notice I have on there, this is our planetarium southern horizon. So if you were out in an open area in the field, and as you looked all the way around you, that horizon would be this, like this right here. And what that means, here is the constellation Tucana, and it has five stars. How many can we see? One. One star, barely. Number two. So unless you get in your vehicle or take a plane or whatever, go south. As you go south, you'll begin to see more and more toward the south. But if you just stay in this general area, you will never see one, three, four, or five. And there's also another piece of information down there of A. So let's scroll down. We have the time. Let's scroll down to the third page. Keep going. And there we have. And what do we have as we come down? There are the stars. And right in the lower part of it, right in between 4 and 5, is C106. And that's the name of a star that's been given uh, when it was discovered a long time ago. And uh, another name for it, 47 Tucane. And there's the information about it. And so we see uh, there it's about 15,000 light years away. And you should be able to see it with your uh, I not using binoculars or a telescope. And from 2023, if we subtracted from that, it would be something like 12,700, uh, no, no, 900, 12,977 years ago. I wasn't there then, so I'm not real sure. I've been barely there. <laughs> uh, right, I understand. And there's some information also telling you what else is in uh, that we can see there from uh, the constellation uh, that we're referring to. Okay, Cindy, let's go back to the calendar, wind it up here. And there was two canna on Tuesday. On Wednesday, something that you're interested in, Cindy. Our next night sky tour talking about October, which to me, October's night is the most beautiful night of everything, you know, all year round. 
because of everything that goes on in uh, the night sky. Yes, and October is my favorite month. No more summer, and it's not yet winter, even though, yes, uh, in, it will be winter officially in December, but uh, I just say I, I like it. Finally, finally, it's cooling off. And I have to be careful of what I decide to take off to go outside and run around because it's not hot anymore. Yeah. Then we also have the moon here at the perigee, which is the opposite of what we we talked about earlier. The egg-shaped orbit of the moon around Earth, and in this case, the perigee. So how would we think, think of which one is the closest to us in the orbit or the farthest to us in the orbit each time of the moon. This is the perigee. What would you, what would help you think which one it is? Uh, the perigee is the closest because it's perilously close and it's going to just, you know. Yeah, perilous <laughs> way we talk about that, that it's perilously closer to Earth. Of course, it's still far away. Right. I mean, if it was we we could see it much bigger than it was than it is normally in the sky for whatever reason we have other troubles you don't have to worry about mowing the lawn tomorrow so i have to worry about mowing the lawn at all right now yeah I, I, that's for sure and i am so thankful that i don't have to mow, mow the lawn of course other people are going to write in and say yeah but everything's drying up and all my plants and flowers and oh, i understand i understand okay our last time to going to the moon chart on saturday friday the 29th of september and we're going to go there and here we come where did we start we started Seven. at position seven, the third quarter. And when will you see the third quarter? In the morning or in the evening? Morning. In the morning, correct. Because as we went around, we eventually came to the new moon, which is the beginning of a, the next orbit, which would be position one. And we went further through two, and we went to three, which was the first quarter. And we go on to number four, and we wind up here so far as it's passing through 0.5, the full moon. So in September, you will see all of the four main points of the moon, where it is uh, in relation to Earth, and the terminology we give to each one of them. And the full moon is the place where it, it has to be for you to have a moon or a lunar eclipse. And you see it at night, midnightish, a little bit before and a little bit after. But if we turn around and we look at point one, or we look at the root where point one would be, since we can't see it, it's the sun's in our eyes, that we would have then there uh, what we would be able to reference is that's the beginning of our new orbit. And so this is what it has been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands of years, orbiting uh, the Earth. And I would put the egg shape on it, but that slowly shifts. So I would have to have the egg shape for September and then the egg shape for October, the egg shape. And so, no, I'm just going to leave it like it is and let you understand where it is and what what we have uh, there and how to reference on that. So, Cindy, I see that here on the, uh, let's go back to the calendar. 
And the last thing on there, it says, uh, I'm going to have the planetarium presentation this coming Saturday. I'll talk about those seven constellations. I'll add a little bit more information about something. You see, I did mention a month or two ago that uh, you can uh, everybody can see the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. But I have also, and I can show it to you, a teeny dipper and the giant dipper. But you have to come to the planetarium this coming Saturday, and I will show you all four of the of them dippers of the dippers with two of them. And I've been hoping that the astronomers would put in talk about the giant dipper there, but not up to me. The other thing, the last thing is, as of September the 30th, when we finish the month, that means we have toured a total of 64 of the 88 constellations. So we're just shy of being three-fourths of the way through all the constellations. We're only 73% instead of 75. And how many more are there? Well, how many constellations are there in the sky? If you play it's the 80, piano. 88, right? Pardon? 88, right? 88, yes. Yeah. So, 64 we have what another 24 to go and we will finish those up in october november and december so that's all i have cindy if you want to do some wrap up on some good library events that are coming yeah. and uh letting everybody know also when our uh next WebEx meeting would be, and also our next uh, time, which is right here for us on the 27th uh, in September. That's not this month, but in September. And both uh, line up uh, what we want. The WebEx meeting, what this or the Facebook one is the Wednesday before I do the presentation in the in the planetarium. So go ahead, Cindy. Sure. All right. So if you guys are looking for events on our web page, it's a you hit events and then you hit the flyers registration. And what we've got coming up is um, a lot of fun things. Like today, we have Mike Matthews art exhibit meet and greet from four to five. So if you're still on campus, come on over to come and uh, listen to the artist talk about his work. And then next week on Monday, we're going to be have we're going to have some games out, including just dance. Uh, that will be from 11 to 2 o'clock next Monday. And we also have next Wednesday, August the 30th. We have Magician So New Varkay. That one will be at the Anderson Center and it'll be at noon. He is an inspirational speaker that uses music to um, inspire. Those of you who are creative, consider joining the CTC Writers Guild. Um, just call us at the library at 254-526-1621 and um, ask about the Writers Guild. This is where all the creative people on campus meet, and uh, we would love to have you join it. Also, two other things for our creative people, three things. Also look um, at our, on our website, check out Byways, because that is for our creative people. It is a contest to be published. Two more contests that we have going on, our horror video contest. Um, if you are a video maker, go ahead and check out how you can get involved in the horror video contest. That is due October the 10th. So make sure that you um, get your videos in before that time. 
We also have a poetry slam and open mic that'll be coming up in October. So lots and lots and lots of events that we have going on this semester. And um, again, our monthly night sky tours with Warren. And um, so we're just gonna be busy, busy, Warren. Yes, indeed. And like uh, Cindy mentioned earlier, October, November, December, and into January are ideal times to go out in the cool night sky to see the constellations and what's up there. And because it's cooler or colder here on Earth where we are, that makes the sky actually clearer to see. It's harder to look through, I'll just say murky uh, summer sky, but it makes it uh, almost like crystal clear for these next few months. And you will enjoy, we're going to be eventually talking about the predominant constellation for the fall and winter. Uh, we've already gone through, of course, for summer the predominant constellation there. So Cindy, thank you for the opportunity and for the time. And uh, were there any questions I need to answer? Yeah, Alyssa, anything? No, there were no questions. Okay, okay. smart right. group. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> thank you so much, Warren. We appreciate yeah. you um, just teaching us all about the night sky and we will, oh, we'll actually see you before your next night sky tour because you're doing an event for us on September 6th called Round Trip to Mars. Yeah. So um, we'll we'll find out his all his advice and uh, wisdom about getting there and living there and all the fun stuff. So we'll mm -hmm. see you on September sixth. There you go. All right. All right. Okay, Thank guys. You. Everybody, have a great day, and we will see you next time. Bye.